Yeah, I think yeah. Hey, so good morning, everybody, uh, for our special Wednesday uh, seminar, GL seminar. Um, actually, Dave had volunteered to do this on Monday, and I said, I'm afraid that not a lot of people are going to be here on Monday. <laughs> I was here on Monday, and there were not a lot of people on campus at all. Um, I asked Dave if he wanted me to introduce him, and we both decided that if, if you haven't figured out who Dave Mao is by now, <laughs> that's your problem. Um, but he has managed to be on this camp, well, in this institution for 49 years. And he's going to tell us today about some of the really cool stuff he's been working on most recently. And so with that, I'm going to shut the lights down and see what we can do right now. Thank you. But uh, it looks like I'm going to change all the, everything I know for the 49 years. Now it looks different. <laughs> so um, OK, the work I've mostly done uh, at the HPCAT, that's a Cisicon <coughs> facility of the GL. Uh, the title is kind of provocative to say, um, how do I know that you do, do not know? So let's start with something that you know, or you think you know, or we think we know. <coughs> so current view of a deep lower mantle, that I define as a halfway of the lower mantle. So below 1,800 kilometer or like 50, 70, <coughs> no, 6 uh, GPA. Uh, we all know that the major minerals are some kind of iron, magnesium, silicate. Uh, it could be bridgmanite or it could be post-power stuff. So this model, uh, remind you, this model is actually around for 30 years. Uh, was uh, originally uh, put out by uh, <coughs> Ringwood and, re and constantly revised by Craig Zina. So revision just means that you, the recirculation of the silica Recognition of iron, uh, of FeO, and recognition of uh, alumina, and the perovskite, and so on. The rest of this is pretty much the same. So first, we know that the, the lower mantle just uniformly or simply not like upper mantle or crust is very complicated. The crust or upper mantle, even this is a very too simplified view. The lower mantle just straight line all the way down. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so it's a uh, iron magnesium silicate and iron magnesium oxide. That uh, could be called the magnesium oxide or ferro-pyrocade. So that we take for granted. And how about the iron? The iron in the uh, lower mantle, you think iron either two plus and later uh, later says okay now because the the um, <coughs> bridgmanite has a lot of iron in uh, ferric iron, so it could be a large portion of the uh, uh, ferric iron. That also sounds like a very robust <coughs> uh, view. Oxygen, you would think the low mantle should be low because it's clo so close to the core, and the core is the metallic iron. So whatever you have there will be reduced by metallic iron, so you don't have that much oxygen. Uh, then hydrogen, uh, this is uh, much more uncertain. People think <coughs> uh, for quite some time that say, okay, the low mantle may be very dry, maybe bone dry. But lately, like the uh, last uh, three, four years, uh, uh, there's some paper published about uh, uh, dense uh, magnesium silicate, uh, uh, dense hydros and magnesium silicate, and found that uh, there's uh, some high pressure form and so suddenly revive them and say, OK, maybe there's some water in the lower mantle, um, all the way down the core. But regardless, we think uh, uh, hydrogen will be in hydrous mineral or in water and bounded by oxygen. Okay. So uh, obviously, I'm, I'm starting with the figure. I'm going to say all these views uh, should be revised. <coughs> OK, so why do I start with the oxygen, iron, uh, I mean, iron, oxygen, hydrogen and so on. Iron is the most abundant element in the Earth uh, by de uh, weight. Oxygen is the most abundant by atomic number. So if you think, OK, take a simplest view of the, of the Earth, it is iron oxide <coughs> uh, planet. 
And then hydrogen is something very mobile. It can do many things and it's very important without uh, hydrogen, this would not be a living planet. So uh, let's start with, uh, if, you, if you're going to revise the whole view, you start with the three simplest, uh, most, uh, most important principal <coughs> element. So the first question, how after dark can I get in the low mantle? And uh, the conventional wisdom, and it's very logical conclusion is, uh, okay, this is uh, metallic iron. There's some free oxygen in the air, so there is great, uh, must be a, a gradation from very uh, uh, reduced to very oxidized, and go from pure metallic iron to uh, iron oxide and uh, magnetite, hematite, and so on. Okay, so that's a that's a view of uh, FO2. But uh, early on, also people found some uh, paradox. For instance, like the uh, this. Uh, so-called paradox of a mental redox is that based on that view, the surface is uh, uh, the very oxidized somewhere around uh, F uh, MQ. That's the uh, ferrolite, magnesium, magnesite, um, ferrolite, magnetite, and quartz is the buffer, and uh, everyone use uh, so plus ten. That's ten order of magnitude more. Uh, uh, oxidized than QF, FQM. And uh, the, when you get to the lower mantle, it's uh, minus five, so the 15 order magnitude uh, <coughs> range from the surface to the, to the interior. If that's the case, then you should not see too much uh, fer ferric ion in the lower mantle. So Cassie McCammon pointed out, actually the, the uh, <coughs> amount of ferric ion is reversed. And on the upper, in the upper mantle, it's uh, like a 0.3, 0.4%. But uh, going to lower mantle for very limited number of uh, diamond come from lower mantle, actually it's pretty high. It's about 4%. So why is that? And uh, her explanation was, uh, okay, now the lower mantle has a lot, lot of uh, um, <laughs> bridgmanite or provoscite that can take a lot of ferric iron or the, the Iron in uh, Bridgman night will be mostly uh, ferric, uh, not mostly ferric, but will we'll have higher percentage, like 4% is not out of uh, question. Uh, uh, okay, there's some issue with the argument because of the, the diamond she uh, referenced to are not actually br has any Bridgman night in there. Some of those are just, just uh, iron oxide. So uh, that's they're then quite co uh, consistent, but still, it's <coughs> it is a paradox, and uh, uh, why this is, uh, it, it is this way. <coughs> so, okay, we have this. Uh, so we talk about this uh, QFM minus five, and uh, why this is suddenly become very high. So if we look at again, conventional wisdom is the lower mantle is very uh, reduced. Uh, uh, it's a uh, FQM minus five, and that's uh, that's the one thing. The second second conventional wisdom is that for study the ion from the range of a pure metallic ion to oxide to oxygen, you the m the, m the most oxidized ion you can get is a plus three. Okay, first uh, I, I'm I'm starting with some slide um, I have given a year ago. If you uh, uh, I hope you remember, but if you don't remember, I'm just reflashing the first uh, several slides that way. And then, uh, so last time I gave a talk was uh, uh, in April last year. So there are a lot of thing, new things happening, but uh, it start, let's start from this uh, oxidation <coughs> reduction. So um, there's no need to study anything more oxidized than FB203. And so this part, um, no one has ever studied that. For, for no, no, uh, regardless of how many studies you have for iron oxide, that, but no one seems to be interested in this, uh, except chemists. Chemistry, they study very uh, oxidized, but that, that two fields didn't uh, overlap. <coughs> okay, so um, just in, uh, so my studying interest was actually studying this part. Between FeO and iron, there could be some other compound. So uh, Dr. Yang Kim started to calculate. But what she f he found that was that actually uh, there, there could be some uh, compound in this uh, uh, on this slide, <coughs> but the most uh, 
uh, distinguished compound is FeO2. So it's more oxidized than uh, ferroclein. And it has this, uh, this apparent uh, Fe4 plus, but actually that's not correct. It, if you, we look at the, <coughs> the iron uh, spectroscopy, it is 2 plus. Okay. But anyway, it's FeO2. And uh, uh, so this is just a calculation. So um, I from old school, I don't quite trust the cal cal calculation. So I just keep calculating and see whether you can get anything different. But whatever he calculate, you know, always uh, the FeO2 stand out like a sore thumb. And also, the, if you look, the phonon is stable. So, and uh, the structure is the same as the pyrite structure. So if you look at pyrite structure, uh, <coughs> the pyrite is uh, uh, FeS2. And uh, it's natural, it's the next element on the, in the periodic table. And uh, uh, the, in that case, also the I is 2 plus, because uh, the sulfur in that case has bound and become two, become a sulfur copper bond, sulfur being on 1 plus. And in this case, it's similar. Uh, OK, now whenever I give uh, this talk uh, to chemists, uh, this also is a very well-known uh, <coughs> peroxide. So we get into argument what is peroxide and so on. But that's not concern. Uh, just that the structure is like this. So um, OK, so it's in the calculation, it's so that I cannot ignore that. Then uh, we went ahead to do some experiment, since it's not too difficult. And at uh, uh, like a, a lower mantle, low, deep low mantle, I said about 70 GPA. Then in, indeed, you put um, a hematite in oxygen environment, and, and then you heat it. This is some remaining hematite had not completely converted. It all converted into this pattern, the cubic pattern with, with uh, uh, <coughs> pH3 uh, symmetry with uh, pyrite structure. So uh, that's the <coughs> refinement of that structure. It's, it is uh, the pyrite structure. And uh, so, OK. At this point, it sounds like an interesting chemistry issue. I mean, you study something which is totally unrealistic for Earth's interior. Earth's interior, people know it's, uh, it's uh <coughs> um, FQM, FMQ minus 5, and this is the FMQ plus 15. So uh, you are way out of a range. So, OK, so in order to get this chemistry, we say, well, can we get some oxygen in the environment that Earth's interior? OK, so where the extra oxygen can come from? So this, we just t took a jump and to say, well, OK, uh, if we have water go down there, if you have a, so if you have water plus Fe2O3, that is equivalent to formula is to this uh, goethite. If you have a goethite down there, um, we know this, it, it was, uh, uh, if you decompose, goethite will become Fe2O3 plus water. But is that possible when you have high enough pressure and temperature, uh, it became uh, FeO2 plus hydrogen. So th this I have totally no uh, confidence it will happen, just like the first experiment, uh, whether FeO2 can ever be synthesized. Uh, but indeed, OK. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, so OK. So the question is, uh, can we get uh, oxygen out of water? That means the water plus hematite if you can get some oxygen out of that, you would end up with uh, FeO2 with pure hydrogen left. This, this, this requires a lot, because it requires some very reducing environment, like a, a hydrogen coexisting with this presumably very oxidized situation. But actually, we can't, um, because uh, this is the first experiment with uh, um, hematite plus uh, oxygen. The second experiment is just the uh, uh, goethite, which is equivalent to hematite plus water. And I put it in neon pressure medium, so we don't add and subtract hydrogen from that. And you get uh, the same pattern. You see, it's still the goethite uh, turning into the FeO2. So uh, where does this hydrogen go? Then we look at the, the media, the neon media. We do see the hydrogen peak in neon media. So hydrogen just diffuses into neon. And so, you, so you, you, we demonstrate that reaction. And it was, so now the, that means that the, it, 
it's possible if you have a good head, you can preserve the good head, which is stable up down, even in a downgoing slab, all the way down to the low mantle. And uh, then it will convert into this transition. It may be reacted with the ion something. Let's go to that later. Just it is possible you can bring something very oxidized down to the core mantle uh, boundary. Okay, so that w uh, and we and I gave a talk last year uh, in April, and uh, this was published in June, uh, and uh, with with this re result. It's still not so interesting. We don't have that much good head uh, on the Earth's surface. Why well, there are some uh, iron rust by the surface, and uh, you don't have a big chunk of the good head. Uh, the, if the chunk of percentage in the crust is not that big much, so how do we make this anything important in the deep low mantle? You need to have enough uh, good head. But if you look at the formula, what this is is just the iron plus water. So if you have enough iron or enough water and enough water, you can probably make this. But you need to demonstrate that the iron plus uh, uh, water will make a good head. We'll, we'll make something of this formula. Uh, because the, the it's not quite balanced. It has excess uh, hydrogen that you have to get rid of. <coughs> and uh, iron is not a problem. Because if you talk about deep uh, lower mantle, it's in contact with the huge ball of iron. And it's the metallic iron is yeah, everywhere. So the question is really whether you can bring enough water down there. But that's the first thing first. Let's not uh, concern how much water we have. Let's concern what would happen if you have water in contact with iron. So now go back to the familiar geophysical lab primary diagram, everything represented in the triangle is here. And uh, so this is the iron, and uh, this side is the oxygen and the, and the hydrogen. As I said, if you look at uh, the Earth as the, the planet, if you can only name three elements, I will put this as a representative of the Earth. <coughs> OK, now, so you in the core, you have iron. And here, you have water. And we know the water, OK, the red lines are tie lines. In phase diagram, those are tie lines. Those are the paths of the material paths. Uh, <coughs> so uh, the those are valid timeline we prove we just proved now is the uh, what okay before you have a water plus uh, um, FeO FeO2O3 at low pressure but at high pressure became hydrogen plus uh, FeO2 so so at least the water touch this will become hydrogen plus FeO2. Uh, O2. And this is a little more complicated. Uh, H U F E O two uh H X and I'm I'm gonna get to that later because later we found that you can have a you have almost continuous solution or calculation you can get the same structure from F E O two to F E O two H. You can put a hydrogen in there up to one. And uh, <laughs> the the uh, for physical calculation both ends were stable. And uh, for experiment, which we can show that we have many other in between. Okay, but that <coughs> that's a later part of the uh, story. Just that uh, basically, this is all pyrite. The pyrite form of uh, iron oxide plus <coughs> and uh <coughs> hydride um, is a stable phase at that condition. And if you start with the water plus uh, iron, it, the water will give out uh, oxygen to oxidize iron, first make the FeH plus FeO, then make FeH plus fe 3 then continuous to go become more oxidized, it eventually become this. So this, just use a simple word that what this should should mean. <coughs> okay, so we did the experiment from iron plus water, we end up with the, the paraphase plus FeH. We start with this, uh, uh, plus uh, FeO, we also end up with this. And the magnetite also end up with this. And this is the, the, the most, uh, I mean, clearest example, because all those are have mixture of the lower uh, phase and they're also trying to get to the eventually to the power phase. If you have a just um, uh, uh <coughs> Fe2O3 plus water, it became a power phase. But this power phase, it didn't get rid of all the hydrogen. And I'm going to get to that later. 
it has some hasn't left. It's not one, it's not a zero. <coughs> but it's the <coughs> um, diffraction pattern is a very clean uh, a cubic pattern. <coughs> okay, so at Coleman boundary, if you drip in water down there, what will happen is first uh, touch eye and form this, then form this, 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 this. We have you have many layers. Uh, if you have limited water, eventually the water will be used up your only end of this. But if you continuously have water flowing down there, you will form all this including up the, to this uh, uh, the one we observe like like uh, <coughs> iron, uh, like a, a hydrogen plus a BO2, like this delta is forming. So it depends on which one you stop first. But uh, so assume we have enough water, <coughs> then we will end uh, with uh, the, if you keep going down there and keep touching the core, and you start building up this multi-layer like this. And then the reaction depends on how much water drain down there for how long, and eventually you will build up a very oxygen-rich layer between the core and the boundary. This could be the uh, oxalobrasy zone, or could be some other weird feature of D double prime and so on. Um, so this will be, so the model is uh, before, you're thinking of the convection and things going down, make it more uh, uniform. Actually, make it more heterogeneous because, uh, because of this also, another thing happening here is that I already make some iron hydride. Iron hydride melt at 1,000 degree lower temperature than, than uh, <coughs> the oxide. So when you get uh, the near core band mantle boundary, you initially make some of this, but the hydrogen will be gone. So you're back to iron. Then you continue this reaction. The hydrogen can come up and uh, uh, and uh, react uh, and the reaction is away, or it diffuses way up. Then continue the water cycle. So that's the way. And my view of uh, what water cycle is anyway. And and uh, there are other view that saying that water once it get down to low mantle, it will dissolve in core and it disappear. If that's the case, then through geological time, we will not have any water on the surface. It's all gone. So, so my view is the water will have to come up. Then, then, so in this case, this reaction actually separate water, the hydrogen from uh, water. Hydrogen become separate, drain up, and it leave oxygen down there. So the, re the net reaction is uh, you start water plus iron, you go down to form the boundary, you, you left uh, this uh, iron, <coughs> Uh, 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 um, dioxide there, and uh, then the hydrogen come up, continue the cycle. So the, the, the water cycle became separated as the hydrogen cycle and the water cycle in a deep lower mantle. And, and uh, if this happened, of course there will be a lot of consequence. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not going to talk this this time, but uh, you can see that there will be a, a very dramatic con consequence of this. Okay, now, so there, now uh, to take a digression, uh, here I'm saying that the, the hydrogen now here acts as an oxygen pump because of what it does is the, hy the water, uh, hydrogen in the water goes down there and then, then leaves oxygen to the iron and the, the hydrogen come up. And just keep cycling that means that you enrich oxygen in a deep low mantle and hydrogen is like a pump just keep uh, generating that. So the, the, the in this way, the lower mantle, deep lower mantle become a hydrogen generator. It's like the <coughs> you use the, the sunlight to, to, to set fill water and the hydrogen go one way, oxygen go the other way. But why uh, water acts differently in the, in the lower, deep lower mantle become a hydrogen oxygen pump? Okay, uh <coughs> this is the experiment that uh, we did on the, this pilot structure thing. Uh, initially, we thought it was pure uh, FeO2, but it is not because uh, the unit cell is larger than FeO2. But it's uh, larger every time we do an experiment, it's not consistent. It varies quite a lot, very very up to like uh, 5 to 10 percent, which is not possible is n in any experiment error. So the only explanation is uh, that it did not get rid of all the hydrogen, and sometimes it has more or less hydrogen. So, w so we did many experiments. Put this one in argon, in neon. In neon, we can catch the hydrogen. 
But the most of the time, it's difficult. If your cat didn't diffuse out, how do you know it's there? It's difficult to see that. Uh, and uh, and uh, also, we put the hematite in uh, water. Uh, every time, we get always get this pattern, this uh, parasite. But uh, the unit cell volume are not the same. And uh, the unit cell volume is also a function of temperature and a function of time. If you leave the heating for a long time, then the unit cell become smaller. Uh, so the, the explanation is that you have a hydrogen, and you can get rid of some hydrogen, then it be, the volume becomes smaller. So this is a scattering. Okay. Now, if you have a pure substance or something that doesn't change, it usually it falls on very tightly, the, 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 and suddenly it's no more than units, uh, uh, 0.3% in the unit cell, in, in the volume. But here you can, you can jump like a 10%. So, so some of this is n not reasonable. It has to be related to, to the amount of hydrogen in there. Okay. So we did a, the uh, initial calculation. We can calculate something for, for this parasite with without hydrogen and parasite without hydro with hydrogen. Both of these two are very stable in the theory calculation. It's difficult for them to calculate uh, the, the solid solution because, uh, I mean, if a percentage of this uh, that seem to be too, uh, so far, if you have a strict composition, the theory can calculate. OK. So there are two curves. And these two, they are differ by 10%. Uh, if you have a one with uh, hi uh, hydrogen and without hydrogen. And this is a lower pressure, the uh, epsilon phase of FG uh, OOH. Uh, Gertide is uh, alpha, uh, is gamma uh, uh, FG OOH. This one is uh, cos uh, epsilon. Uh, this went to some big condition to this. So first from this to the trans transform, the, for if you have remain at the, the epsilon phase, the equilibrium state, the pressure volume relation are very tight. But once you convert uh, to this, it, it can be anywhere within this range. So we figure out the formula and the related the, uh, the hydrogen content to the unit cell volume. OK, but still we haven't explained why the hydrogen dif uh, behave differently. So we did a, a molecular dynamic calculation and found that the, the, those are the hydrogen position as long as time or, or take a phase as frozen point, is uh, the, the position of uh, iron and oxygen are pretty fixed. It's only thermal vibration. But hydrogen is more than thermal vibration. And uh, when it goes at a higher temperature, like 2800, it actually moves everywhere. So the, the hydrogen behaves like a superionic uh, <coughs> atom, just like, uh, say, uh, lithium, uh, the superionic uh, lithium, and so on. Hydrogen is also known in water become so superionic at a high pressure and temperature. So now you have a different uh, kind of hydrogen. It, it can uh, be, uh, if it's, when it's superionic, it can be anywhere in the structure. So that it's, it's easier to add and, su and sub subtract. You can take it out. And let's also explain why it's not stoichiometric. It can be any of the number. Uh, <coughs> then we conduct a different, another kind type of calculation, try to calculate the reaction path from the epsilon phase to the, it goes through uh, several paths, OK, the uh, TS1, 2, 3, or the, or the transition path to finally, final state is this uh, uh, <coughs> parasite. And the conclusion is uh, for this structure, you have all the hydrogen preserved as one, the formula is correct. But once you get to this, it can be anywhere. But uh, uh, go through those paths, it's likely to lose 50% of hydrogen. So that's cons also consistent with what we saw, that uh, the hydrogen, uh, <coughs> the unit cell volume is, is, is uh, uh, close to like 50% hydrogen loss. OK, now let's get back to the question. Do we have enough water down there? Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, the estimation um, <coughs> that uh, the for the, the, the OK, there was some earlier uh, estimation, uh, uh, say, two 15 years, 20 years ago, by Peacock, uh, they give us a number of uh, 10 uh, to the uh, 12 uh, uh, kilogram per year, something like that. OK, I'll, I'll make it this, this wrong. 
and the, it may get ornamented, but anyway, I have to use some uh, slide. Water go down with the sediment. And uh, <coughs> Peter Van Keegan has made an uh, estimation of how much hydrogen was lost from, from that. Like approximately 30, uh, only 30% 30 actually go down to the uh, lower mantle. Uh, or or, or, or uh, reversely, 70% will come back in uh, <coughs> arc volcanism. OK, whatever, there are enough reason to believe there's plenty of water go down to the lower mantle or to Constantine zone, so we don't know how, how far it go down there. Further than Constantine zone, depend on carrier, what material you have, what, uh, what uh, mineral you can carry the water down. So everything we know on the surface, like cars or serpentine, or those all converted to something else, and the blue side are converted to something else. So people are studying the something called dense magnesium silicate, and then dense hydros DH, dense hydros magnesium silicate. And, uh, but uh, the highest pressure of the, that group of, uh, of uh, mineral is uh, about contained zone. There isn't any known goes uh, went higher. So like five years ago, if you ask people, do we have any water in the deep, uh, in the low mantle? Probably the answer is the uh, low mantle is dry. And uh, um, until like recently, like uh, 2013, that uh, uh, <coughs> um, Lish found a phase uh, a H, and this phase can go much deeper. Uh, phase D before was can go a little bit deeper than Constantine zone, but not much. So he found this phase. So it depends on whether you find any high pressure hazardous phase. But uh, when, I look, when you look at the literature, actually all the hazardous phase, high pressure hazardous phase were, discu were discovered with multi amber. There isn't a single one discovered with diamond cell. That also means that the, those experiments only went to like a constant zone pressure. And uh, the reason that Nish can could find uh, this phase is because the multi amber now improved. They have using diamond uh, ambers, they, uh, using simple diamond and multi amber, they could get to 50. Uh, GPA, so now this this phase go to 50 GPA. <coughs> so it's, it 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 looks like it's an experimental issue that if you don't study there, you could you couldn't say whether you have any uh, dense hazardous phase. Uh, so uh, this is uh, 2015, and there's a news of view, and a hi his view is that now you can transport a large amount of water into the deep uh, earth. <coughs> and the lower mantle may uh, be more hazardous uh, over time. So he believes that the lower mantle is wet. Um, this uh, U phase, uh, uh, phase H, turned out to be the same as the delta phase. Uh, but the, the delta phase of uh, AL uh, alumina, OK, sometimes I write ALOOH. Uh, that sort of implies it has OH bound. But uh, just for formula, to be consistent, so now I try to write it as AlO2H. OK. Um, it's actually the same structure, but just uh, this uh, different uh, composition. Th there's a uh, flaw in the argument. If you see this uh, water go keep going down there, but uh, me, uh, both these two phase, they are 10% lighter than the low mantle. So, um, there was a, I heard another talk saying that using this phase to say it's it consistent with the transition zone because it stagnates at transition zone. It just won't penetrate. So you this sink to the transition zone, it just, just frozen in there. So, okay, anyway. So so this one, unless you carry, you carry a very small amount in a big rock and the rock go down quickly, then you can carry it down. But it, it is not a good carrier for this. So you need a, Something stable, and uh, also you need something dense. <coughs> okay. Now, adding this phase, a, phase H itself doesn't go very far, but phase H plus alu aluminum delta phase, the salt solution goes uh, goes down further because uh, aluminum tends to ha to be in general a high temperature, uh, more refractory, and uh, so you can keep the water longer. So uh, then we study. Uh, the phase of uh, iron and aluminum using this solution make it gel. 
and also we made the iron magnesium as well. And, I, and I'll get to that later. Just iron magnesium cell. So we found this, all those will, still, will crystallize to uh, paraphase uh, structure, the, 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 the phase I'm, I'm talking <coughs> <coughs> earlier. Uh, also, I, I got rid of this X, assuming that the hydrogen is mobile, but uh, you don't, it's, it's hard to get rid of completely. They all crystallize in para structure. We also discovered in you know, the hydrogen, uh, it's not only para structure, they are more structure, has the same volume and also very stable, but uh, uh, also has the same formula. So this became a big family. It's not just one mineral or one. Fam para itself is a big family, but uh, there's also hydro's uh, hexagonal uh, phase. Is a, is a, is w will be a big family. Okay, <coughs> so this is a kind of diffraction pattern of a mixture of uh, of uh, this HH phase plus a delta. Delta is just that uh, aluminum AlO2H. Okay, and uh, you can see that the if you calculate the the uh, powder pattern, it's so complicated. And it, the strong lines we, we see are only those as one, th those uh, marked one, okay, the, like this one. So based on the power diffraction pattern, there's no way you can, you can identify a phase. I mean, there's just, it, the, this phase is, has a very big unit cell. A equal B is a hexagonal with 10 angstrom. And it has all these lines, yeah, there's no way you can find that. But because we also discovered a new method of doing high pressure experiment. Before it was only powder diffraction or single phase diffraction. This is called a multi grain method. You can ha have a single powder pattern, but very spotty pa powder. You can identify each, each spot and find the hundreds of uh, single crystal out of a powder pattern. And in that, this case, those single crystal are uh, isolated uh, patterns. So, so this is that, uh, that uh, HH phase. So that's the only way you can identify a, a large unit cell like this, and uh, not looking at the powder pattern. The powder pattern just compares uh, how that compare with the the, um, the <coughs> other phases. Okay, so we we get like a like a hundreds of uh, spots from a single crystal of this single crystal, and also we found at least fifty a single crystal out of each phase. So this goes beyond doubt. And <laughs> so this is uh, iron with 20% aluminum, and uh, we have a HH phase, and also we have para phase, so the para and HH phase. Again, if you look at para pattern, there's no way you can, you can distinguish them. You may be able to see the para structure because it's small unit cell and it's uh, simple, but there's no way you can see the low symmetry and the very big unit cell. But anyway, we have the single crystal result from this. What's very interesting is that these two phase are closely related. And uh, you, the, that's the same sample. If you heat it to 2,000 degree, and this is a mostly um, um, HH phase, HH phase. But if you cool it down to uh, at the tank, at first it still remain this, but still you start to see the growth of this blue one. That's the para. And uh, after a while, then this phase converted to para. And uh, then if you hit again, you come back again. So, so this is the fir also the first time I saw something like this. It is, it's a look like single cr has to be single crystal, single crystal diffraction, but we, I, I still we still haven't found the crystallographic relation yet. There must be some. <coughs> OK. Another thing very interesting is that the ion Fe and uh, AL has, uh, okay, first, uh, the, this two structure, the parrot and the HH phase, HH phase has the identical volume, okay, the, the molar volume, volume divided by number of uh, molecules. One is a very big unit cell, but divided by uh, uh, many uh <coughs> molecules and the same. So this square is the uh, HH phase, cross is the same, and point the para structure converted back and forth. They just parallel on top of each other. Okay. And also, another interesting thing is uh, they have the same volume, 
and the also if you replace the iron uh, the magnesium by uh, the iron by aluminum um, also make it similar because at this pressure iron you, at low pressure, you think of iron Fe2 plus is big, and aluminum is small. But at high pressure, the iron became um, uh, low spin, and then it actually became the same size. Iron, magnesium, and aluminum become the same size. <coughs> so, so the a lot of bottom are the same. The density depends on the amount of iron because iron is much heavier. So now you can see that uh, if you if you look at this uh, H space, uh, like Nish, uh, 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 they report it, it's below the, the prime density, OK, the, at the pressure. So so if you go to that, it's 10% lower, you, you would uh, slow rather than sink into lower mantle. But if you look at this uh, iron, uh, iron aluminum, you put 20% iron in there, it's enough to be say uh, 10, 20 percent heavier, and uh, so this will sink. So this will be ca able to carry enough water down to the <coughs> core metal boundary. Okay, <coughs> the next question is, uh, as, as I said, uh, the, the magnesium will do the same thing. So if you have a FEMGO, you know that at the either transition zone or above, it's not stable because it would react with uh, whatever with uh, pyroxene composition to form uh, uh, olivine composition like, like a spinel. But uh, this could be stable in the low mantle. But what if you have water next to it? So in the presence of water, if you have a ferroperoxase, it's actually unstable. So you put the water there. So this is the, the uh, ferroperoxase with the 70% um, uh <coughs> pyroxase. 30% uh, uh, Wolfsite. And uh, you, you go to 96 GPA and 12, uh, 14, 20 Kelvin, and it, you can s clearly see the, uh, the pericrase. But uh, at a higher temperature, a higher then it converted to this uh, pyrocaster. So the then you see this reaction. The <coughs> ferroperoxase plus water also goes to the same thing, just like uh, iron. So this iron magnesium, magnesium also, in this case, acts as a pseudo 4 plus, as a 2 plus. But uh, <coughs> it's, it's this become interchangeable. OK. If you look at the composition, um, the, OK, the highest amount we, we, we can do is like a 60 per 70 percent. We, we haven't got 100 uh, percent. Then you can see that uh, basically if you replace iron and magnesium, they have a very similar re ionic radius and also very similar charge. And the, the charge at here doesn't mean too much because it's really defined by the oxygen itself. So uh, this is the one. We, we also have made the iron magnesium solid solution of the 2 plus without hydrogen, just put the magnesium first in oxygen, uh, pure oxygen. Then the volume is small. But if you put a hydrogen, the difference is about one hydrogen. And uh, th this uh, the theory can calculate fairly accurately what x is and y is. So, so you end up with some of the, the x is less than one uh, magnesium first side of the pericles. So the, the phase diagram would be like this. We have 60% uh, then the, the transition. So more iron, the transition will happen at lower pressure because the pure iron uh, FeO2 can become pyrocaster. But with 70%, you convert at uh, uh, 100 GPA. 80%, uh, we, haven't, we haven't made it to this phase yet, but we also see some issue space. The phase diagram is more complicated in this phase. OK, so uh, looks like uh, this uh, um, water can convert anything contained iron into this pyrosexual or HH phase, or maybe some more, <coughs> because <coughs> the phase diagram looks kind of complicated now. Uh, do we have any evidence of such, such thing 
like uh, us in which iron rich catches you know pro deep lower mantle. Okay. So of course the cosmology says there are something very funny happen in the in the core mantle boundary. There's a deep double prime zone, and there's many things can happen. And uh, before, because the mineral physics they, they, they only tell them that the only possible thing is the uh, uh, scan and post probably sky. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the temperature, so there's quite limited. And now we have we have actually too many different phases we can play with. But uh, let's just say whether the the uh, FeO2 will meet that requirement. So first we synthesize some F some FeO2, but now it's very easy to synthesize this very pure FeO2 uh, HX. So this is for spectroscopy study. We don't ha want to have anything else in there. Okay. So you can see very nice pattern, and you can see the sample, and then you can do all kinds of spectroscopy. OK, we can do uh, x-ray emission spectroscopy. That tells you whether it's high spin or low spin. And this uh, phase, actually, at low pressure, it is high spin. And you can reverse the uh, release the pressure. It was it, it will not re you it cannot release it to z uh, to ambient condition, but you can release it to 40 GPA, and uh, so this level, uh, the the you can see the change of this the, the sharp change. This is the low spin. This is the high spin. So actually, it has a high spin low spin transition at about 45 to 70 GPA. So when once we made the, this uh, phase uh, and uh, in the deep lower mantle, I said about 76 GPA. This is all. <coughs> uh, low spin iron. Okay, also we can do actually a Morse bar spectroscopy uh, that also tells you, uh, uh, you this is uh, Fe2 plus in the low spin state. Also, we can do x ray uh, absorption spectroscopy, all those in at the, H, uh, at the HP cat. <coughs> this is the fluoresc partial fluorescence yield. Uh, actually, absorption. <coughs> actually, absorption you can do it either by transmission or partial uh, um, fluorescent yield. And this has been well calibrated. What the four plus will look like, uh, and, uh, and three plus, and the two plus, and zero. And uh, this the the p edge pick when you pick a different differential. I mean, this p edge, you will see this peak uh, Fe two plus is somewhere here. So, uh, and if, if for this sample, the high pressure, you can see that it's differential fit identical to the P plus. Okay, now, then we can also measure the shear velocity and compression velocity of this phase uh, compared to ultra low velocity zone. Uh, this actually has a lower, even lower velocity than ultra low velocity zone. So if you add some of this, so you, you because uh, now it looks like uh, all those have some many phases mixed. So this will be a nice ingredient. And if you if you react with the FeH and with the uh, 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 core and with put some magnesium there, this can certainly fit the ultra low velocity zone. So if you say, uh, do we have any evidence this thing exists? I would say, okay, now all our evidence comes from <coughs> seismic data, and seismic data see something like this, so that give a good support of something uh, of uh, this may exist in that set. Okay, now let's get back to the what we know and uh, how I'm going to modify it. So this this is a just a re replay of the first figure, and uh, remember that the major minerals and I then divide the Iron, oxygen, and uh, hydrogen, because the iron is most uh, those are most abundant uh, elements, and it is the most uh, mobile element. So now the revised version is uh, maybe we still have uh, um, bridgmanite and post power sky, but uh, most of iron will be taken out. That's a that's a separate study. I didn't present data. Just uh, just have to take my word for that. And uh, this structure can. Even maybe you can take some silica in there, but uh, not that much it goes up with the, f the pressure because uh, you see everything is is uh, O2, FeO2, MgO2, AlO2, why not silica O2, right? So uh, 
uh, and also we use uh, we have some evidence something like uh, like happened. But let's just leave that out. So let's say we still have a uh, Richmond night and post top set, but that's basically untrue. We may not have the FEMCO, depend on how much water in there, how efficient that pump is. Okay, but this will be a major phase, replacing the the maintenance of the set. And I am, in that case, is two plus in uh, uh, still maintaining this still, but uh, there will be two plus three plus in the magnesium ferrite are are uh, 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 <coughs> magnetized, but also a lot of like pseudo four plus is actually two plus. But if you look at the ratio of uh, iron and oxygen, you will call it four plus in this kind of structure. The oxygen will be extremely inhomogeneous because uh, uh, you c and uh, and uh, you ca it's even possible if it decomposed will have some pure elemental oxygen like on the surface. In that case, it will be metallic O8. So the model of uh, whatever covalent boundary should be like the surface. You should have some free oxygen and the metallic. <coughs> Hydrogen is super ionic in that case, so it's not a uh, OH bond anymore. And it, it most hydrogen will be in this, but uh, you, you can start releasing that because uh, this one is this hydrogen in this case is mobile, is variable. Okay. So the conclusion is instead of uh, very reducing the uh, FQM minus five, the deep low mantle could be inhomogeneous, very oxidized. Well, I say up to, actually it could be up to plus 10, because uh, if you're on the surface, it's plus 10. The deep, uh, uh, so that's 15 order of magnitude difference. This will be a giant hydrogen generator, because the uh, water goes down there, hydrogen is come up, coming up, it's a, it's a hydrogen generator. So we, we should forget about the, the ionic uh, concept of uh, of the size of uh, uh, MgO uh, two plus Al two three plus Ca four plus Ion two three four, four plus. Actually, here it's uh, the the structure cons constrain the whatever this uh, is not ionic. Well, it that concept may still be useful, but don't be limited by that. I'm saying. So um, with the, this phase, it's not stable. If you have a, a, a H two O around, okay, and and this could determine a major phase, okay, then you m may have some very oxygen rich patches in the deep low mantle, and this when this thing come up, you you will cause some catastrophic event or uh, have some uh, the like great oxidation event or something like that can cause a major change in the mantle dynamics and also the environment and. Uh, <coughs> uh, on the surface. Okay, so the acknowledgement, most of the work are done at HD cap, and with the help of the HD sync at uh, uh, the GL group at APS, and uh, also collaborate with Stanford, George Mason University, and HD Star is a, um, we have a, a student, a postdoc student, and, and a staff from HD Star in, in China. Thank you very much. Okay, the estimation is uh, like uh, if you distribute it uniformly, assume all the, all the water goes down there and come back uh, through geological time, um, I think it's like something like a, the equivalent boundary is 13 kilometer thick. Okay, uh, and the, see because it's patches, so it's not all in one place, so somewhere it could be 50 kilometers, so it could be that extent uh, that uh, also low velocity zone. But uh, <coughs> this is a swimming using Peter uh, um, estimate amount. So I, I just have to take his word for how much goes down there. And assuming they all reach down there and release the oxygen and come back. Okay. But uh, also through geological time, this may come up occasionally. Like uh, if, say, if you have a patch of oxygen rich thing and uh, 
suppose you just drink into a core, then two particles bubble out as a big chunk of oxygen. What it can cause is the, the big oxygen event, but it could also cause the fire extinction. Because the extinction is that in animals, they actually have too much oxygen. It's equivalent to a big oxygen event. That's that's uh, 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 that's all. Uh, okay, they allow them to keep imagining that if th what this happened, this is a real major event. Yeah. So so the okay the, the back to the issue that the oxygen the, the water goes down when they come back again. I heard many talks that people talk about hydrogen uh, uh, goes down or water goes down. They were mainly thinking of uh, having hydrogen dissolve in the core right. and then become a make a make an element. Uh, it's 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 a sort of a like a uh, uh, virtual old model that you think, okay, now how do we solve the, the light element so hydrogen goes down there? Yeah. Okay, but if you, if that happened, then uh, we either get rid of oxygen, uh, all the water, yeah. then we would like mouse or even even more <laughs> dry yeah. than that, or at least the water level would decrease, okay. right? So, but so far, I don't think anyone can prove. You, there are some theory that where we have more or less water, but it's basically the same. Okay. So, so, so that's one thing. And <coughs> another thing how to estimate is uh, how do we know this is the whole mental cycle? It's also possible because this argument, all you need is a lower mental cycle. Right. right. If a lower mental, on top of lower mental, the wa it's still water, you go down there. But you come back as hydrogen. And but you never go, uh, went all the way up, then it goes down again. So that if, if there's a second cycle, it could be bring down a lot more efficient. <laughs> yeah. So I know you said you don't care about what you think, but but you don't like having to I don't I don't care, but I, I today I don't want to discuss that. <laughs> That's right. So, so actually, the last figure showing is just two plus. So, if you talk about two plus, is that okay? Depend on how do you define that. If depend on the electron near the, uh, the near enough that you can see the near edge spectra, then it's two plus. Okay. Sorry. Yep. It could. That, yeah, I agree with that. It's just that the, the reason we use the 2 plus, 3 plus is this concept works so well at the, for chemistry at the ending condition. But all I'm saying is that when you put pressure there, if you, you, you really have to keep <laughs> with a grain of salt and thinking what you mean by that uh, 2 plus, 3 plus. 
uh, concept. And what do you mean by oxygen is a, uh, is a two, uh, two minus or something? Like that. All, all those concepts, they, they Okay, so uh, again, at your physical level, you want to do everything in equilibrium. You have to reverse every reaction. So we, we basically we did. Okay, <laughs> so you can now you can see that the, the we have many reversal boundary, but there are something that not quite reversible is the hydrogen loss part. You see the 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 X that gives us a lot of trouble because uh, you heat it long enough, then you can see the unit cell changing, and but it's not always consistent because uh, then it depends on many the surrounding materials. If you are surrounded by uh, neon, you can have neon diffu diffuse away. But if you're surrounded by water, you form some other kind of water bond or something. So, but basically, the major. So here I'm only talking about real major chemistry. It happens uh, this way, and then a lot of this I'm not trying to to uh, again. Okay, to say that oxygen fugacity is is useless concept. In fact, I, I want to say oxygen fugacity you need to recalibrate because uh, here we talk about F2M. F2, F it means spare light which decomposes in, will change like five GPA, okay? So, um, and all three, the magnetized is probably less than 20 GPA, but uh, and the quartz is even lower. So none of this really make any sense anymore. But just so you say, if I have a hypothetical pure F2M to that point, then plasma is something. So it's a hypothetical plus some hypothetical thing. So that's why I, I said this thing, this need to be revised. But uh, uh, and, and, and the, the, the concept that the, the more oxygen here in this case is means more oxidized. That's still correct. But uh, the for the ion to be more ferric means more oxidized. That's incorrect. <laughs> so, so basically, the, uh, maybe I should make the conclusion that way. Thank you.